Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're going to work on solving linear inequalities. And before this lesson's over, you should know how to graph an inequality. You should know what equivalent inequalities are and how you can use them. And you should be able to solve inequalities using addition and subtraction, and also to solve inequalities using multiplication and division. Let's do a quick review of inequalities. You, you've all studied inequalities in the past, but we'll review it again real quickly. And, you know, math is just a way to model the real world. Math is just a way to describe what goes on in the real world. And there are inequalities in the real world. For instance, you need to be at least 16 years old to drive a car. That's not an inequality. It doesn't say you have to be exactly 16 years old. It says you need to be at least 16 years old to drive a car. And we could write that mathematically. If we let x equal the age at which you can drive a car, then we could say mathematically that x had to be greater than or equal to 16. Well, if you remember, there are four inequality symbols that you're going to have to remember and use. The first is x is less than 21. Now, this is the less than symbol, and it's easy to remember what it means because the smaller end of the less than symbol points towards the smaller of the two numbers. And the larger end is towards the larger of the two numbers. So x is smaller than 21. This symbol is x is smaller than or equal to 21. We just added half a little equal sign down there below the smaller than symbol. And now it reads x is smaller than or equal to 21 x may be larger than or equal to 21, or x just may be larger than 21. You know how to use a number line to graph a number, don't you? Here's a number, here's an equation, x equals minus 5. And we just put a little dot on minus 5 on the number line, and that indicates that x equals minus 5. Well, what if our mathematical expression was x is less than minus 5. How would we graph that? Well, we draw a circle around the minus 5, and we'd be careful not to fill in that circle. If we filled in the circle, then we really would have put color on the actual number minus 5, and that would be included. We don't want to include minus 5, so we circle it. And then we want numbers that are less than minus 5, so we draw an arrow to the left towards the smaller numbers. Well, what if this was x is larger than minus 5? Well, again, it's not more larger than or equal to, it's larger than. So we want a circle over minus 5. And then we want an arrow going to the right towards the larger numbers. What if it was x is less than or equal to minus 5? Well, in that case, we're going to fill in that circle. We're going to paint it in, and that indicates that uh, the minus 5 is included in the set of solutions to x is less than or equal to minus 5. What if it were in this direction? What if the arrow pointed to the right? Well, then it would read x is greater than or equal to minus 5. You try this one. Graph these two inequalities. Just draw a number line on a piece of paper and with a pencil or a pen graph x is less than or equal to 6 and minus 2 is less than x. Now 
All right, the first one is x is less than or equal to 6. So we're going to need to indicate 6 on the number line, and there's two ways we do that in inequalities. One is a circle that's filled in, and the other is a circle that's, that's empty in the middle. Since this includes the 6, x is less than or equal to 6, we're going to paint in that, that circle and, and paint over the 6, indicating that 6 is included in our solution set. And then we're going to draw an arrow to the left, um, pointing towards the smaller numbers, because x is going to be any number that's smaller than or equal to 6. How about minus 2 is less than x? Well, I, I hope you didn't get confused about that. And, you know, you may just want to remember that you can turn that expression around and write it as x is greater than minus 2. Because in both cases, the bigger number is towards the open end of the, uh, of the inequality symbol. So x is greater than minus 2 is exactly equivalent to minus 2 is less than x. Now we need to indicate where minus 2 is on the number line, and I think that's going to be an open circle because we're not including minus 2. So it'll be an open circle over minus 2 with an arrow pointing towards the larger numbers because x is larger than minus 2. Well, we use the concept of equivalent expressions or equivalent equalities to solve uh, algebraic expressions, algebraic equations. And we're going to use the same concept to solve inequalities. And here's how it works. If we know that a equals b, then we know also that a plus 1 equals b plus 1. Well, if we know that a is greater than b, then we also know that a plus 1 is greater than b plus 1. With an equation, so long as we do the same thing to both sides of the equation, it's still going to be inequality. With an inequality, at least when you're dealing with addition and subtraction, if you do the same things to both sides of the inequality, it's still going to remain an exactly identical inequality. And we can use that principle to solve linear inequalities. Here we have x plus 6 is greater than 11. And if you're asked to solve this for x, here's how you do it. We can do the same thing if it's addition and subtraction. We can do the same thing to both sides of the inequality sign. For instance, we could subtract 6 from both sides of the inequality sign. When we did that, our 6 would disappear on the left side, and we could rewrite this expression, x is greater than 5. So when you're trying to solve inequalities using addition or subtraction, it's just like solving an equation. As long as you add or subtract the same number, to both sides of the equation or both sides of the inequality, everything remains the same. It's a little trickier in multiplication though. Here's what I mean. You know that if a equals b, I can multiply both sides of that equation by 2 and 2a will equal 2b. It's also true that if a is greater than b, and I multiply both sides of the inequality by 2, it's also going to be true that 2a will be greater than 2b. But here's where it gets a little bit tricky. It is true that if a equals b, I can multiply both a and b by minus 2, and it'll still be equal. Minus 2a will equal minus 2b. However, if a is larger than b, and I multiply both sides of the inequality by minus 2, it's no longer the same. a times minus 2 will be less than b times minus 2. If you think about it for a minute, I think you'll see that that makes some sense. For instance, you know that 3 is larger than 1. 
But if I multiply both sides of this inequality by minus 1, then I've got minus 3 is larger than minus 1. But that's not true. Minus 3 is smaller than minus 1. When I multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, or if I divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, I have to reverse my inequality sign. Less than becomes larger than, and larger than becomes less than. Let's look at this concept of multiplying or dividing by negative numbers on a number line, and maybe it'll make a little bit of graphic sense. If we were to graph the numbers minus 9 and 6 on this number line, it'd look just like that. And you can see that minus 9 is a whole bunch further to the left than, than plus 6 is, so minus 9 is a smaller number. Well, what if we were to subtract 1 from both minus 9 and plus 6? The rule is that if we add or subtract any number from both sides of an inequality, the inequality remains exactly the same. Minus 9 would still be smaller than plus 6. And if we move the numbers to the correct position on the number line, you see that it's true. Minus 10 is in fact smaller than minus or than positive 5. Well, what if we were to multiply both sides of the equation by minus 1? You remember the rule is that if we multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, then the inequality sign has to reverse. And sure enough, if we multiply minus 9 by minus 1, it becomes positive 9. And if we multiply positive 6 by negative 1, it becomes negative 6. That negative number creates the opposite of the original number. It drives the original number to the other side of the origin. And so you can see that the inequality sign is going to have to reverse. Here's how this works when we're trying to solve a linear inequality. Let's say we had minus 5x was greater than 25. We want to solve for x. We want to eliminate the minus 5 that's being multiplied by x. So we're going to divide both sides of the inequality by minus 5. When we do that, we have to turn that inequality sign around because we've divided by a negative number. Now we can simplify, divide both sides by that negative 5, and we get x is less than negative 5. If you get confused, you can always test that by putting in the number that's less than negative 5 into the original expression. If we had negative 6, for instance, and we put it into negative 5x is greater than 25, it would be negative 5 times negative 6, or positive 30, which is in fact greater than 25. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I think you're going to find solving inequalities pretty easy. You only have to remember one thing. That one thing is if you're going to multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, then you have to turn the inequality sign around. You have to reverse the inequality sign. In this case, we're not going to have to do that, though. This is pretty straightforward. we got 3x plus 2 is greater than 5. This is a two-step equation, or two-step inequality. And let's first get rid of that plus 2. We'll rewrite this as 3x plus 2 minus 2 is greater than 5 minus 2. I've done the same thing to both sides of the inequality. I've subtracted 2. When I simplify that, I get 3x is greater than 3. Now I need to get rid of that 3 that's being multiplied times x. So I've isolated my x. To do that, I've got to divide both sides by 3. And when I simplify that, I get x is greater than 1. 
you try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my solution. This is another two-step solution, so let's get right into it. First, I want to get rid of, I'm trying to isolate the X, so I got to get rid of that 4 that's a positive 4, and I got to get rid of a minus 3 that's being multiplied times X. Let's get rid of that 4 first. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides of the inequality, and when I simplify, I'm going to get minus 3X is less than or equal to minus 9. Now I need to get rid of that minus 3 that's being multiplied times x. So I'll divide both sides by minus 3. But when I divide or I multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, then I've got to turn my inequality sign around. I have to reverse my, my inequality sign. So when I do that, initially it reads minus 3x divided by minus 3 is less than or equal to minus 9 divided by minus 3. But I got to turn that inequality sign around and it'll read x is greater than or equal to 3. Well that's our lesson on solving inequalities. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you had a good time. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www mastermath.info and you'll find worksheets and quizzes there that will help you make sure you understand this concept. Well, I hope you had a good time and I hope we see you again real soon.